Hello, check, check. Good to see everybody this morning. Good morning. My name is Jeff Mick, and today I'd like to tell you a story. It's one that's rooted in the youthful spirit of adventure. It's a story about the word community and what that means to me. It's also a story that's shared by eight people, but this version is mine. I play bass guitar in a band called Zoloft, and in the year 2016, we were robbed in Houston, Texas. We were on the tail end of our high tolerance tour. Houston was one of our last stops, followed by two nights in Austin, and finally Amarillo. Uh, being in a band is hard. You have to tour constantly, travel constantly, always stay on the top of your game, and you have to do all this while still trying to keep a roof over your head, juggle a full or part-time job. How do, you, how do you do that? How do you take all this time off to travel, rehearse, come up with new material, while still living kind of a double life at home? I don't know either, and I'm in my 30s. I'm still trying to do it. Anyways, we were making it happen, and that's the point. We just released our second studio album. Uh, we were seeing our audience uh, grow to us. Our audience numbers were just growing exponentially. We were having the time of our lives. It was the great adventure. Uh, but all that was unfortunately going to change. The show in Houston uh, was a huge success. We made enough money to actually get a hotel room for the night, so that's what we did. Uh, we packed up the van, headed down the road. We did a little research on the neighborhood we were in and discovered it probably wasn't the best, so we decided to drive another 20 or so miles until we found a place to uh, fall asleep for the night. Now, I want everybody in this room to kind of take a second to imagine what it must be like to wake up to your house burning down. Think about the chaos, making sure all of your family members are accounted for, maybe scrambling around the house to find that uh, item that you don't want to see totally engulfed in flames and lost forever. Well, I have to imagine that's kind of what it felt like uh, to be awoken out of a dead sleep, having six people scrambling around trying to figure out what to do, having your violin player screaming, the van's gone, the van's gone. I double-checked and ran around the parking lot. It's gone. It's missing. And it was. Our van... Uh, was missing. The only thing that was left was a cut padlock on the concrete where it was parked. And just to kind of paint a picture of what a band's van and trailer looks like, uh, that was everything that was missing. Five years of dedication and love, luggage, camping equipment, sleeping bags, blankets, pillows, money, GoPro cameras, Video games, disc golf stuff, food, everything uh, was gone. So there was a lot of tears. There was a lot of arguing. There was a lot of quiet contemplation uh, in the hotel lobby. You know, what was our next step? Uh, we didn't really have one. Uh, thinking about going home just kind of felt like we were on a road to nowhere, or have been on a road to nowhere this whole time. You know, we had cultivated uh, our dreams, and it was just torn away from us. So what was our next step? Uh, we really didn't know. We checked the security footage from the hotel to try and get an identification of, of who or how many people were involved. We saw a car pull up, clip the lock to the trailer, look inside, break into the van, hotwire it, and drive off, and it took them less than three minutes. Less than three minutes, and the better part of a decade of hard work is just completely stolen from you. The police uh, told us if our gear wasn't in some sort of warehouse somewhere or south of the border, it was probably on this stretch of road leading out of town that uh, a bunch of pawn shops were on. And he advised us to, to go check it out on our way out. Uh, so we did. We were, we were driving uh, on our way out of town after we eventually found our van, thank, thankfully. Uh, and I got to tell you, that stretch of road, I witnessed a level of poverty 
that I'd never quite experienced before in my life. I saw kids running around without clothes, drug use, house after house that was boarded up, uh, abandoned. And, you know, I started to feel guilty personally. Here I was, you know, on this quest for my instrument, and uh, these people were just struggling to survive day to day. And it made me feel bad that I got to come home to this amazing community, sleep in a warm bed. So that's kind of how I reasoned the whole situation in the heat of the moment, you know. It didn't make it okay what happened to us, but that's just kind of how I saw it. Uh, So what were we going to do? We didn't really quite know, but uh, life works in weird ways. So a couple of uh, surprises were in store for us. Uh, The first one being uh, the promoter from the Amarillo show said, we're not canceling. You guys are still playing the show. I reached out to my own musical community, and they donated instruments uh, to help you guys get a little bit of gas in your gas tank. And you know, that never happens. We live in such a lonely dog-eat-dog world. If, if this were to happen in like the greater Los Angeles area, for example, sorry, you know, too bad. That really stinks, but you know, too bad. But because we are kind of the underdogs and we're surrounded by the underdogs, we all kind of rallied together. And uh, that show, last show wasn't anything magnificent. It was to me. It was a small bar, not a ton of people, but, uh, you know, it was like kind of like the last hurrah before we, before we went home. And speaking of home, uh, before we even got there, some wonderful uh, members of the community already started uh, rallying donations, benefit concerts, uh, silent auctions. Before we even got home, we had already raised a third of the funds that were going to help get us back on our feet. Where, where, where else would that happen? <laughs> Sir, I can't think of a place. Uh, we live in such an amazing cultivation of positivity and lifting each other up right here in the Grand Valley. And you talk to anybody, uh, and this is just a, a really exceptional place for artists and, and musicians to coexist. Uh, It's fantastic. So in less than two months, we were totally back on our feet. So we decided to start paying it forward. We started devoting our time and energy to uh, local nonprofits, playing benefit shows. And even that seemed to start some sort of snowball effect. Uh, Even now, I hear that if a nonprofit or some worthy organization needs help or some time donated, they have an overabundance of options thrown at them. Like they don't know how how to make the choice. Where else does that happen? I've never heard about that anywhere else. So let's take a step back. Remember that... uh, Uh, length of road in Houston that I talked about with all the pawn shops. Well, on our way to Amarillo, we got an email from somebody who saw the newscast in Houston about what had happened to us, and him and his wife were yard sailing the next day. And uh, he said, I found all your equipment, I think. We saw the, uh, the newscast, and my wife and I were out yard sailing, and it's sitting out in front of somebody's front yard. <laughs> it wasn't in some warehouse or being guarded by some crime syndicate. It was in somebody's yard sale. And uh, whenever I think about that, I kind of hope that some little kid, you know, got an instrument or a drum set and in doing so got something that would never be able to be taken from them. So that's kind of how I reason that one. Anyways, we're back on our feet. We've driven from coast to coast several times since then, uh, and we've even just finished recording our third studio album. It only took us three years, but we did it. (laughs) That'll be released here pretty soon. Um, Thank you. Thank you. So I guess what my through line, I've been trying to think about this, and I, you know, telling this story, I've tried to find some sort of dots to connect, and maybe I won't even figure that out until I'm a little older. But uh, I can tell you that 
There's not a day that goes by that I don't think about what happened to us and the tremendous gift that our community has given us and the platform you guys have uh, fostered for us and given us a voice. And I just would like you to know that every single time I get in that van and drive somewhere else, I understand the fact that I'm a steward and a representer of what we have here. And the entire country is, has found out about it, and uh, we live in a pretty special place. Speaking of which, tonight, uh, I've, <laughs> uh, I've gotten with some uh, people that I've never been in a band with before, and we created a band. We've been working really hard the last month to uh, come up with a night of completely original music uh, that will only be played tonight. You'll never hear it again. You're all invited. You get in free with the TEDx lanyard. It's at the Mesa Theater. It's a block away. Uh, so come on out. You're, you're all invited. Doors are at 6. Our very uh, good friends Rizzo are going to start the night off at 7. So uh, if you guys have the energy after this uh, amazing experience today, come on out. We'd love to see you. Thank you. <laughs> 